business in Africa. You can't afford to be without Africa Investor. Well, thank you so much, uh, Hubert, and good morning, good afternoon, colleagues. I, I agree with a lot what has been said, so let me just add um, three quick uh, additional points from the perspectives of an institutional investor. One is, I think, you know, we really do need to build on the momentum around uh, reimagining the multilateral development banks. And the essence of the problem, if I can sum it up very briefly, is their current mode of operation is to maximize their own investments. And that is a problem because right now pension funds and other institutional investors, if you look at the amount of resources we have, we have, you know, our balance sheets are approximately a thousand times larger than those of the multilateral development banks. So if you're going to get to scale, you need to focus on where the resources are and institutional investors with infinite time horizons often because we're pension funds and things like that are the ideal uh, source of capital to tap into. Unfortunately, you know, the multilateral the development banks, a lot of the development finance institutions, they're not doing this. So in essence, to sum it up, what they should be doing is seeking to maximize the total amount of investment that's flowing into countries, not maximizing their own investments. So that's the first piece. Um, the second one is, um, it was mentioned that we need more, uh, a better project pipeline. Couldn't agree more. The upscale project preparation side of financing uh, d uh, investments, this is about 10% of the, you know, typically the total project cost, takes everyone three to eight years, and it's a complete market failure right now. The, the leading institution globally that does this, the Global Infrastructure Hub, they deploy something around $18 million towards this, which is absolutely incredible when you think about you know, the scale of the problem. Um, we were speaking to the Global Infrastructure Hub and their own stats suggest that for every dollar they invested in upstream project preparation, they were able to mobilize $246 from the private sector. Now that's an incredible ratio. We'll never be able to really replicate that particular ratio at scale, but it's illustrative of, of, of the power of really focusing resources on targeted areas such as upscale project preparation. Because we can mobilize as much institutional capital as we want, and there's a huge appetite for it globally, but not a cent of it will be deployed if there aren't bankable projects in which to invest in. So that's the second piece. And then the last piece is data. For many institutional investors, particularly those who are not located in the African continent, um, the African markets are often new markets for us for which we have very little uh, knowledge and information. A lot of the multilateral development banks have huge amounts of information um, within, the, within their institutions, and they do not share that by and large. Or if they do, they aggregate it you know, and average it out to such a point that it's essentially useless for those who are making investment decisions. So really, they need to be more willing to share their internal data, which what will have happen, it will, it will lower the risk perception because we'll have better data, which of course drives down the cost of capital. So those are the three uh, main elements I just wanted to flag very quickly. Um, CDPQ has worked a lot on these in a number of fora, the B20, the UN, and I'm happy to share that to, to, to you, uh, Guy, through Hubert, um, some of the uh, recommendations that we've put forward in those venues as uh, you formulate this current report. Thank you. Doing business in Africa. You can't afford to be without Africa investor.